most of you heard of or seen the old Walt Disney 1970s movie, Justin Morgan Had a Horse. Yeah. Um, it was a Disney version, Hollywood if you would, about the origin of the Morgan horse. It was not intended to be a documentary, but it was very entertaining. And we all loved it. Uh, it did skirt on a lot of the facts. One fact that they skirted upon was that Justin Morgan, or figure, the colt, was not a two-year-old toss-in to settle a debt. In fact, Justin Morgan, the man, made the long trip from central Vermont to Hartford, Connecticut to purchase figure as a three-year-old. He had already bred 35 mares his three-year-old year. And that was in 1789, or 1792, when he made the trip for a three-year-old. And from Vermont to Connecticut back then was not an easy trip. Figure, also later known as Justin Morgan, was a wonderful anomaly. He could outwork, outlast, outpull all others in New England. And the New England hardships did not affect his soundness. He remained sound and hardy throughout his long life. He did not affect his easy keeper qualities. We always say that our horses gain weight on air and sunshine, and that is just about it. And to put it into perspective, figure was foaled in 1789, the year that George Washington became our first president. This horse singly founded America's first breed of horse. This was done through careful and intensive line breeding and inbreeding back to the founder to set type. It has not only preserved type, but the nervous system, the fearlessness, the work ethic, the soundness and hardiness that you find in today's Lippitt Morgan over 230 years later. The Lippitt Morgan became defined as a distinct family of Morgans, of high percentage Morgans, in the early 1970s by a group of people who were concerned, and rightfully so, that these wonderful horses and this gene pool were dwindling and becoming meshed into something new and improved by those who wanted something else. Today's Lippitt Morgan has nearly as much blood of figure as would one of his grandsons or granddaughters, which would be 25%. Our horses often have 23% or slightly more. The Lippitt Morgan is the only family of Morgans that can lay claim to this much of that blood. All Lippitt Morgans are defined as descending from 25 foundation horses, eight stallions and 17 mares, that were selected on their bloodlines and closeness to figure. All Lippitts go back on all lines of their pedigree to our cornerstone, our cornerstone stallion, Ethan Allen II. He was a very intensely line-bred Justin Morgan horse back in the day. And all of our foundation, 25 foundation horses, go back on every line of their pedigree to him. One reason for the type. <clears throat> so that testifies to the purity of this horse. Also, you cannot breed up to a purebred Lippet Morgan by breeding a purebred Lippet Morgan to a half, three-quarter, seven-eighths Lippet Morgan. There would always be a line that did not meet the criteria to go back all the way to our cornerstone. So therefore, we are the purest thing you can get today to Justin Morgan. Today's Lippet Morgan still looks and moves like the original figure of over 200 years ago. That is quite an accomplishment. Our trot is not high action like the show Morgan. They were called daisy clippers and they were ground covering, and they, they often drove these horses in the rugged hills of Vermont and New Hampshire 100 miles in one day, pulling freight. These horses still possess the vibrance, the nervous system and energy, the love of work, and they love their people. They love to have a job, and they are very faithful to their owners. 
As we know, with all of our heritage farm animals, <coughs> excuse me, the Lippet Morgan was bred for usefulness and to work alongside his master, no matter what the task. A hot or ill-tempered horse was not desired. And while these horses do have an abundance of energy, it is controlled energy and it should never be cons considered to be hot. They have a keen nervous system, but they are not hot. Hot is purposeless, wasted energy. They are a wonderful family horse. My mare is back there today in the stall. I'm an old lady and my grandchildren are very young and they show and ride and play with all of our horses on a daily basis. They love children. Her sire will be here tomorrow and Saturday in the stall and doing demonstrations. And he's a very people-oriented horse too. Today, today this horse is critically endangered and has been declining in numbers for several years. One reason is the transition to the show Morgan. Is that this, is that this poster, the show Morgan? Okay, thank you. <laughs> and the show Morgan often has less than 8% Morgan blood. They have been outcrossing to saddlebred, standard bred, hackney, range mares, and others for years. And under Rule 2 of AMHA, American Morgan Horse Association, which was viable from the 1920s until the 1950s, if one horse had a purebred Morgan parent, which probably at that time had 35% Morgan blood, was crossed on anything else, the progeny could be registered as Morgan. And if you see today, if you see a Palomino, Buckskin, Dunn, whatever, colored Morgan, it's not a lipid. We are only bay, brown, chestnut, and black, and we generally have few or no white markings. Our numbers have that drastically declined, and we lose more horses each year now than we begin to replace by breeding. The best estimate is that while there may be 1,100 horses, lipid horses, in the USA, Canada, a couple in England and a few in New Zealand, and I think that estimate is high. There is at best guess less than 400 breedable mares ages three to 22, and fewer than that of stallions, about 70, and probably many of those have been gelded or are sterile. And with the mares, for instance, you know, you don't know how many of those mares are not able to produce for one reason or another, even if they're in the right age group. The Lippet Morgan is listed by Equus for Survival Trust as critically endangered, and the Lippet Morgan Horse Registry is an affiliate of the ALBC, and we are trying to attain that status with them now. Now let's talk about this graph. Can you see that, sort of? Okay, this is a listing of a graph of purebred lipid foals over a 15 year period. I started in 1998, and you can see the trend. In 1998, we had 128 foals. That was probably a hiatus year for us, nationwide and in Canada. 1999, we had 93, 2000 we had 78, 2001 we had 82, 2002 we had 90, 2003 we had 109, and 2004 we had 76 foals, lipid foals. That was an average of 89 per year in that first seven years. The next seven years, starting with 2005, we had 92. In 2006, we had 44. 2007, 60. 2008, 45. 2009, 41. 2010, 23. 2011, 32. And 2012, 30. That's an average of 39 foals per year. Now, these numbers prior to 2008 
were taken from the AMHA, American Morgan Horse Association Registry, so we know those foals were registered, and also a publication called the Lippet Report that Lippet breeders put out every few years because we we're small backyard breeders and we keep track. We know who's having foals. There's not that many of us. We know who each other is and we know how many foals there are. We've, we know that we lose foals to not being registered. And in 2011, of those 32 foals that we know were born, we know there were 32 foals, eight of them were not registered with AMHA. That's nearly a fourth of that number of foals. If they weren't registered, it, by now, as a yearling, they're not gonna get registered probably, and I'll get to that in just a minute. So we assume, and we're probably rightfully so, that in the years past, we lost at least a fourth of our horses to not being registered also, because we have mature lippets now that are not registered, and people are trying to jump through hoops to get them registered and DNA'd and they're from registered parents. We also know that some of those unregistered horses are second generation, and their sire and dam may still be living, and they were registered, but um, their sire and dam weren't ever registered. So we've lost a lot of horses over the year to not being registered. The, the Lippet Morgan Horse Registry was formed approximately two years ago as a nonprofit, DNA-based registry for purebred Lippet Morgans to protect and preserve this family of the true Morgan. So we know that we lose some through not being registered, as we just talked about. AMHA charges $70 to belong to them annually. And for that $70 membership fee, you get the bargain price of $90 to register your foal with them before it's six months old. Six months to a year, it's $125 to register it. After that, it goes to 200 and then 400. Backyard breeders cannot and will not be able, to, they can't pay that, they just can't. The Lippet Morgan Horse Registry has a flat fee for registering pure red lipids. It's $45, that includes the DNA. We have no salaries to pay. We have only a board of trustees that manages and oversees the integrity of the registry and the working of the registry. We have no members. What we do have is we call friends of the registry. There are no demands on friends of the registry. We just like to be able to use their names on our website and that they support us, you know, verbally or out in public or at a horse event or whatever, say, hey, have you heard about the Lippet Registry? It's really a good thing. Um, a couple of those that are friends of the registry do get our information and take it to shows that they go to or whatever, but we don't, have, we don't really ask them to do that unless they just volunteer. <clears throat> we do our DNA testing through Texas A&M, and we also provide any of the services that AMHA would pr provide, such as transfer leases for just almost nothing. Uh, we also can provide farm uh, prefixes so that no one else can use your prefix. Mine is Ash Royalty. When I purchased it from AMHA about 15 years ago, it was $100, and I believe it's close to $300 to purchase a, that's a lifetime, farm, farm prefix now. The Lippet Morgan Horse Registry has farm, farm prefixes, $25. We're trying to reach the backyard breeder and those who champion the purebred lippet to keep us going. <clears throat> uh, there are only a handful of lippets that actually compete in AMHA sanctioned shows. I can think of about five in the US and Canada that do driving events or something like that, you know, or maybe dressage. But we're not their type of horse, and unless you want to compete in their trail rides or their competitive trail rides, my personal opinion is it's a lot of money. <laughs> when, you, when you still have the, when you're preserving the Lippet Morgan through the Lippet Morgan Horse Registry. Now I did register my colt this year in both, only because he's going to be a stallion and I think that perhaps somewhere in his lifetime he may breed other Morgan mares 
and put some type back into them, and that's fine. But we're very protective of our fillies. And I can't think of a better way. Had he been a filly, I would not have registered him with AMHA because I figure the people who want to buy our mares to breed for color Morgans or whatever else they want to breed, they can absorb the cost if we decide to sell them outside the Lippet world. The purchaser can absorb the AMHA cost to register them AMHA. I think it's a good way to protect our Lippet mares because we know they'll only be bred to Lippet stallions that way. But one of my favorite sayings is that you need to get your hands on the hair. So please come pick up our handouts, come see our horses, and come get your hands on the hair. <laughs>